How often do you see this? No custom combos here. Only pure Street Fighter. Why does that command grab recover that fast? Oh, that is a lot of block damage. How often do you see that super? Never. I don't know how good it is. It sucked so far. Kareen hasn't even done a fucking super at all. I'd run out of shit so fast talking doing a third strike podcast. I say that, but I've been watching Third Strike. Oh, that was cool! Oh, it dropped, though. Is there, like, does that... <laughs> was that a range thing, or can you do diff different follow-ups in that safer? How come Kareen has a cancelable far stand short and far stand forward? Must be nice. Cool. You see that? Low short, low short, super. Like that strike. Guard break will kill. She got hit on purpose. She traded. She knew she couldn't block. If she blocked, she got guard broken and then swept and then... Dead. Cool. So this is a three on three player thing, I think. So the Kareen stays up and someone else comes on. Soccer will surely be high tier in this um format. I imagine Chun Li and Dawson would probably be top two. But maybe Hakuma. Ouch. Super? Nope. That was a level 3. That's a fast round. Don't forget really, really long range, like safe pokes. This looks like fucking Street Fighter 5 right here. I'm seeing all the same shit. Not even a punish. That was, I think. Oh, the fireball. <laughs> that light tattoo is so low. This must be unsafe. Really? Probably not fast enough. Good lord. But what's the name of the channel? That's literally the channel I'm watching this fucking video on. Well, I understand. That guard bar is looking low. She might have been able to block that, to be honest. But trying might have been better. <laughs> um, if there's any game that allows for one of the characters to have a third strike parry, I like that character. No, you don't have to block before the super freeze. So, a sim. See, this character is probably top tier in Z only.
Why'd they make Yoga Flame so big in this game? Why is it so safe? Why does Awesome have no weaknesses for being able to hit you across the screen? They're grooves, basically. They changed the mechanics of the game. Like, Exism can't air block. Whereas the other two can block mid-air as long as they're blocking air-to-air -air attacks. I think there's a difference in the way that throws are broken for Exism too, but I don't remember. Exism only has a single bar that can only use level 3 supers, and only one per character. So Akuma only has Raging Demon, for example. Um, ooh. Aism has a bunch of uh, supers that you can do at level 1, 2, or 3. Also known as Eism. But, um, uh, your damage and stun values are lower, and you can take less stun damage before you, I mean guard damage before you get guard broken. Oh look, a whole list. <laughs> no taunting except for Dan. Yoga fire. How he caught that tech flip. Oh yeah, now we see him. Exism is like the worst one. It's kind of a meme compared to the other two. The other two are like pretty close to each other. And which one's better depends on your character, but almost always it's Vism. Exism does interesting things to characters though. Like Chun-Li has a new special move in Exism only. Adon has some changes to his Jaguar kick and Exism only. Z-Sodom. So much soul in this character select. Honda's, I think, usually considered to be the one of the worst characters in this whole game. Don't quote me. Oh, the super level one super just got beat. I think that's safe. Oh, the SPD. Brady's that bad. I knew it was not amazing. But seeing bottom three is a bit surprising. I think both Junie and Julie have gone way up from the last time I looked, which is surprising. Well, not Junie. Junie's not surprising. All three of them went up. Kenny went up too. It used to be that Junie was considered mid, Kenny was low, and Jury was bottom. Julie, excuse me. But now I think it's more like... Kami's high, or like mid, high mid. Junie's like high mid. And Julie's just regular old low. Or maybe even mid herself. You drop them. Alpha 4, I think a lot of people would be fine with, to be honest. Yuli. It's easy for an unfinished character to be good. Or bad. Game Watch isn't finished, right? I think that's something they said in interviews at some point. He's not the worst character in Melee. Although I don't think he's very good in Melee. I don't know, this position. Why does he get so much damage off a of jump in? Jump fierce, stand strong, 360 kick. Just does so much fucking damage.
Nash. That's cool. We like Nash, right? So Nash is a lot more guilish in this game. For example, he is an actual true charge character. And he hasn't he doesn't have any of the bullshit Shadowloo stuff. He's only got two special moves, I think. It's just flash kick and sonic boom. See, Nash is actually designed to be the stand in for Guile in this game. Because Guile isn't in this game. Nash is kinda hype. I got hype for Nash. Look at him, he's playing well. Ooh, that went far. Look how little that fireball did. Fireballs lose damage the further they travel. Chun Li is very bare bones, but I don't know, I think I'd call her unfinished. More like poorly thought out. You'd have an easier time convincing me that Q was unfinished. See the forward dash? Nash is the only character in the whole game with a forward dash. Cool. How often do you get to see combos like that? It's badass. Who was it? I missed it. Akuma. Akuma's probably top tier in this format. But it's hard to say because his supers are actually, I think, not as good as some of the other characters in this game. Surely Guy and Gen must be better in this format. Since they already have great supers. Oh, see the red flash? He, got, he hit a button on the frame. He Got hit. The air blocking, baby. This actually looks hella fun. This looks much better than no, um, no, uh, this looks much better with, than, than with Vism. No restrictions. Oh my god, that trade. What was it? Flash kick? <gasps> the super! It did so much! No respect. Trading supers with normals. Level 3 super, no less. Nash can come back so easily still, I feel. Oh no, I feel like he's dead. How has he not died yet? Okay. Yeah, there's definitely some game feel that's really strong. That fucking wind pose. Claw. Geef. A lot of the things that make Geef like mega top tier in this game are Vism stuff. So A Geef is actually pretty. I can see that being a big knock on his tier. There's a blue hand in this game. I think that uh, Lariat has frame one invincibility. Doesn't hit frame one though. Just lost there, but lost to an uppercut. Q 
key alpha counter to prevent the um, guard crush, but he got guard crushed anyway. Now look at that guard bar. It's looking like a big problem, to be honest. Yup. Yup. He can't block anymore. If he gets guard crushed again, it's over. That was some good shit. I remember Rion in Alpha 3, but he's not in this Alpha 3. No one plays the Alpha 3 he's in. Uh, no, not all normals have the same guard damage. In fact, not even all normals of the same strength have the same guard damage. But it's not huge variance. It's usually based on strength of button and number of hits. So, for example, Ryu's close around house hits twice. And it's a heavy, so it does quite a lot. Oh. I want to say Akuma's got the same close run house. Where's my anti-air demon? The Masa Masa. Oh my god, that was such a weird DP. And it almost worked. The Akuma's name seems to be Mob. No. The player 1 is Masa Masa and the player 2 is Mob. Is it Mob? I think it is. It's a reference to Mob Psycho 100. The team name is uh, the one with the face with the Thetas. Are those Thetas? I think they're not, but I don't remember what they are. I feel like it's horizontal line with the Theta. A zero counter is an alpha counter. It's like an attack out of block. It costs uh, one third of your super meter and one of your little guard bars. They're good because um, they can stop you from getting guard broken. But they're very expensive and they don't do very much damage. It's, pr it's a lot worse than a beer reversal. I can see this being a counter pick. It's actually, I found it to be kind of hard to get an air throw with Vig at all in this game. I played him a little bit. Because he jumps so damn high. He jumps at a different height from all other characters. This Vig has gotten like five fucking air throws this round. Air throw is a universal mechanic in this game. Literally everyone has one. Yes, Shadows of Air Throws. Several of the uh, Shadows have had Air Throws before. Ken had one on Street Fighter 2, I think. Akuma's had Air Throws that work on air and ground opponents. Has special moves. This particular game has two button throws. I 
Oh yeah, most characters have two different throw animations. In fact, they might all. But don't quote me on that. I want to see a guy or again. No, I don't. Those are like the least interesting characters. Was that Honda? It is. Nona's got nice big limbs. Not much else goes go for him in this game. I can see this being a counter pick too. Sand, it's salt. That's like part of how to bless a stage in fucking sumo. Oh, uh, the headbutt was blocked. And punished, I think. Yeah, I can see this being a counter pick. This looks really hard. But maybe Honda just sucks. It's probably both. Honda's intro in SF5 has him throwing salt, actually. Doskui. There are characters in SF3 with one, two, or three th different throws. Ibuki and Elena both have a single throw animation. Whereas someone like Ken has three of them. Or Dudley. Alpha counter. Yeah, and uh, in second impact, you could do any throw animation in either direction. Nice. And he killed at the zero zero. He has to get to like negative one for the time to actually run out. Definitely, um, Hugo's mesh though is better than most mesh those. For the fact that you can combo out of it, and for the fact that it does more damage than most of them, and the fact that it can get more hits than most of them. But generally, I feel like most mesh shows are equally shitty. The main thing about mash shows is how long it takes to start doing the mashing hits. Or has to like climb onto your head so the player, the opponent will get be made aware of it faster. So once the actual mashing part starts to happen, um, they're probably already mashing. It's Birdie. Birdie's normals are very similar in this game to SF5. That's his jump strong, believe it or not. But his special moves are pretty heavily changed. Nice. For one thing, Brady's a charge character in this game. Charge back four punches his bullhead. And then he's got another one that's red. No, the red one is the bullhead, I think. Bullhorn is still a zonk, but it's like not a zonk, it's a turnaround punch. You have to be holding three buttons and release all three at the same time. So it's more like Balrog. And then you've got 360 kick and 360 punch, I think. No, just 360 punch. Or is it both? I don't remember. A decent number of charged characters got uncharged. It's like three. Maybe four. Nash, um, Vega, Birdie. Maybe there's some more, I don't know. Yeah, you can react in time. There are other matches.
Smash shows where, like, basically as soon as the throw animation starts, they're already getting kicked in the chest. Yeah, I guess sort of G. I'll have you guys know that DiCaprio in the game's code is a motion character. You can't play as her, but you know she's there. Got two whole mm, special moves and they're both motion. And that's the five's code, yeah. She's uh NPC only. She's not playable. She's a uh, enemy in story mode. No banana in this game. No donut. No can. No chain. Well, he uses the chain for his command grab. But he's got no quarter circle forward kick chain. It's funny because his normals are all fairly accurate. So that's the zonk, the one that hits multiple times. The one that turns red is his uh, charge move. I called it the zonk again, but it's a turnaround punch. Also, he's getting fucked. Oh, there it is. That's the SPD. I think one of Birdie's supers has a fake dizzy animation like Mika. I think it's that one. It's like dot dot dot, and then he pauses and taunts and then does two more. But it's like a real dizzy animation. And you can like shake out of it. He only uses the chains in that command grab and one of his his normal throws, I think. Otherwise they're cosmetic. Yeah. Quarter circle forward, EX kicks and SF five is this game's S P D animation. Very nice little touch. They did that a lot in SF5. You can find that everywhere. Just moves that aren't in the game, the EX move will visually look like the move. Like Ryu doing Shinshoryu with his EX uppercut. You can actually find that on just about every character. <laughs> it's quite a cool. Oh, decent punish, I guess. Bison has the end of his super on the um, core circle for or er, on his ex uh, scissor kick. Yeah, there's a lot of subtle things in animation that the game now does better than it used to. Two Nashes. Oh, classic. You see that round start?
the whole sleeper just to get a guard break. But see, the thing is, the a lot of people who play the games a lot hate cinematics. But a lot of people who only play the video games a little bit love them. Especially potential buyers love them. Even in the SF5 era, you can find you can go on YouTube and search like all super animations, Street Fighter Five all supers. You'll probably find a video with like millions of views for all the fucking normies. But you know, if I made a fighting game for sure, I've thought about this. If I made a fighting game, I'd make it so if you like did the super and held the button, it would like play out an animation, like a long super animation. But if you like just press the button, it wouldn't do the animation, but it would do the same damage and leave the same screen position and stuff. It would just be a lot faster. Something where like there was no decision being made for either player. It was just like, do I feel like watching this or not? Or maybe holding the button would skip the animation. Probably that. I'd make it so they were there, but they were skippable. What SF5 does that's kind of nice is most supers have an early animation where if the early animation kills, it doesn't play out the full animation. In fact, uh, um, what's her name? Lucia has that right now of the three new characters. I didn't test the other two, but I know Lucia does. She's got three hits before the cinematic starts, and if one of those three hits kills, then the cinematic never starts. Full cinematic hits from raw punishes, and no cinematics if it's in a combo. I kind of like that. Rose is cool. Rose's theme is good. I've seen a lot of Dragon Ball Fighters, and I can definitely say, I shouldn't say a lot, I've seen a bit of Dragon Fighters. And I can definitely say that um, Super Animations in that game quite prevalent. I feel like Arxis Works doesn't really like do the whole Super thing that much, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, um, they're kind of non-traditional, but Blast Blue has generally has, like, supers that are used in the game. You know, players actually use them, and they're, like, functional. They're not great. I don't see supers that much. It depends on the character, but I don't see supers that much in Guilty Gear. And a lot of the other stuff, like, I don't know. They're definitely not, they've never done like a Marvel Super kind of thing, you know? They're good in Blast Blue Tag, but I think it's just one per character, right? Or is it? I don't remember. Maybe I lied. I just forgot. That's a godlike wind pose. I don't even know if I've ever seen that. I must have. Usually those are cut out of arcade footage. Marvel always had supers just kind of hit without too much cinematic stuff, unless it's level 3, in which case there's a lot of cinematic stuff. 
they couldn't use cinematic stuff that much because most cinematic stuff can't hit multiple characters, and that's a kind of a big feature of Marvel. It's hitting, hitting assists at the same time. That super looks really good. I'm pretty tired actually. I'm working tomorrow too. Today's my last day off. I could have finished Honda's video today, but I tried really hard. I've never decided something was or wasn't a super based on the number of based on the animation of the super. Supers are just a function for me. If it does lots of damage and consumes lots of meter, it's a super done. Especially if it freezes the screen. Oh no, this matchup. Pretty sure this is a counter pick. Even in this game where they're both very strong characters. Pretty sure Dalsim bullies Geef. Looking pretty good so far. Goddamn. Oh, real good. These are great trades. Cool, it hit properly. I wouldn't mind more install supers in Street Fighter. Street Fighter 3 had some really bad ones, or they were really wacky. I can't immediately think of a good install super in Street Fighter 3. And there were several of them. Q and Makoto, Oro. I feel like there's another still, somewhere. Uh, or I just got two of them. Now I think about it. Oh yeah. Yang and Yon are both installed, so those are the ones I was thinking of. And those are definitely good and not bad. Tengu Stones is also an install and good and not bad. So there you go, those three top tier installs. Oops, I forgot the main super of my main character. Classic. Funny how that can happen. Cammy? No, Kareen. I thought Kenny for a second, I was like, cool. I'll have you know that um, SF5 is an entire game built around uh, installs, and that made a lot of people hate it. Literally, there are more characters with installs than, like, or, like, yeah. <laughs> It's rare to not have an install. Even Vega has an install. I was trying to think of a character who doesn't have one. Vegas is pretty straightforward. Vega is probably the least installed character in the game, isn't he?
if Makoto had dash punch cancel into Super 3, it would be quite good, I feel. Like Street Fighter 4. But that would probably allow Makoto to have dash punch cancel into her other two Supers, which would be busted. Well, it would be busted for Super 1. Because she can already do that. It should be easier. I feel like there might be one character who has two non-installed triggers, but I can't think of anyone like that. Uh, it's tricky to say if Mika's an install. Functionally, I want to say no. Oh, Sim. His is like a little bit. Anything that has a timer, it's like it's a little bit. Honestly, Alex's VT2 is not too bad either. Zeku's VT, both of them are kind of technically installs. They just end really fast. Ibuki. Ibuki and Sagat can both store second projectile. Sagat gets whole new special moves, so. There's so many characters where it's like you just get the ability to do something again. Like Zeku VT2. Ibuki's probably the closest character to a character with no install. Considering in most other fighting games, an install would be something like Ken VT1, where a lot of stuff changes just a little bit to make it just a bit stronger. Every single thing gets a little bit better instead of getting access to one new special move that goes that kills the install instantly as soon as it's used. Like Vega. Vega gets two new special moves, so. Suddenly has a touch of stun doing that combo that he was doing, but I think he might have hit the corner too quickly. Again, is that a Kami? It's still the Kareen. the blue. It's the blue coloration. It's tripping me up. That's really hard to get in this game. One of my friends was musing to me. No. I'll uh, just hold that whole thought. No musings today. Uh, no, not for Kareen. Oh, look, the timer. It does damage every time it takes down. 
she died before I even hit her. Are there players who used to be Goku teams? How prominent is the idea of like a canon team in Dragon Ball Fighters? Are there people who do that? It's actually surprisingly hard to do anything about that second dive kick. He can come at you from a lot of different angles. But Gen is actually forced to do the second dive kick. He can't like choose not to do it. So it's kinda awkward. But he can like do a really short dive kick to fake it, for example, so like uppercutting it is not so reliable. Most people just focus on blocking it. He can go to the ceiling too. Do you like a ceiling drop second dive kick? It's invincible and it's very safe. The damage is okay too. So it's not a bad super. Oh look at this. Gonna spend the other? No. Saving it. Ken is quite cool, yes. I saw the usage list of uh, characters in SF, I mean in Dragon Ball Fighters, and Chrome was like bottom one, or bottom two. I also saw that Vegeta was almost unplayed, base Vegeta, but I think the guy who came in third was using Vegeta. He was like the only guy in like top 64 using him, or whatever. At least the only guy in top 16. I don't know now which one it was. I remember him being like the best character early on. Did they nerf him, or is it power creep? People figure shit out. He got Tron. No idea which side that hit on for the last hit. Oh. 
We haven't seen that much of him yet, but Shang Tsung looks really broken in um, um, MK. Oh my lord, how's he not chipped? I love Shang Tsung as a character, and I love his voice and his design in this new game. But man, it looks like most characters can't easily fight um, that fireball. Ground fireball. That's where reset he was too fast. Got the hit when he didn't mean to. See the super high pushback on the DP. So even if it's air blocked, it's safe. Reset there. Uh, he can't get a combo from a jump and he's missed like three. There's like a special roll when the opponent hits this wall, but I don't know what it is. That allows them to... Uh, makes them immune to damage from combos. I think it's once you hit the wall, you can only be juggled like one more time or something. Before you become invincible until you hit the ground. So you can get some really ridiculous mid-screen combos where it's like... Chun-Li jump around house times like five. I feel like it's not just once, but I don't know how it works. Rolento. Ah, oh, that fell out and must have been unsafe. Cool. That was a great punish. But it said counter hit, so it wasn't. I'm getting kind of tired, but it's only midnight. I might only watch a few more. Remember Mar Marvel Infinite? Where they were trying hard right at the beginning and then they just said no. Nah. wonder if it's something about the license itself. Oh, 
I feel like that's not a normal throw. That might be his kick SPD. How'd that not chip? Great mysteries of the universe. Call. Huh, that super. Imagine if fucking Birdie's Bull Revenger in Street Fighter V had a super freeze. Imagine how much easier it would be to deal with. Did it again. It sucked again. Nice box. Pretty, huh? Damn, you're holding off for Arthur and Firebrand. I feel bad for you. Arthur and Firebrand are cool um, functions. And they're actual, I don't know, they have a lot more variety on that Capcom IP. I don't want 20 Street Fighters. Arthur's cool. I want Sun Sun back. I don't care which one. I was holding on for Strider and I got him. To be honest, it's not even Leon I want, but you guys might not want to hear the Resident Evil character I want. Might upset some people. Jake Mueller. Jake's campaign was the best part of RE6 by far, and RE6 was honestly not even a bad game. And it seemed to be setting him up as a new important person, and he was kind of cool. I like the synergy he had with Sherry. Being villain kids. That was cute. Oh, the air throw. RE5 is generally. Mm, 
It's hard to say which is sillier between those two games. The thing about Resident Evil 6 is it's genuinely four games. It's not one video game, it's four video games. There's four separate campaigns and each one is kind of as long as a full video game. And they're all very, very different. RE5 and 6 are both extremely good couch co-op games. Some of the best I've ever played. Um, oh my god, just keep doing it. But literally, like, they're different games tonally, too. Like, there's a few scenarios where the... There's a couple bosses where the scenarios meet up. And you have, like, four players instead of two. And they do some fun things with that, because it searches for other players doing the same boss online. Good shit. God, I was thinking recently while we were playing Dragon's Dogma that if Dragon's Dogma had um, side-by-side -side co op or even just co-op in general, it would be like my top one game. And it's a shame because the game already feels like it's fundamentally built for it, you know? Like it would take almost no changes. It's like, why the fuck? And that's already what Dragon's Dogma Online is, and it's hopefully what Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to be. I've streamed Silent Hill 2, Homecoming Downpour, Origins, no not Origins, um, Shared Memories. Um, I don't think I've done 1, 3, or 4 on stream. Dragon's Dogma Online is like the second most played MMO in Japan, I think, or like the third most. So it's probably pretty good. I think there's one class that has the ability to restore other classes' stamina that basically functions as the medic or whatever cleric of the team and I think literally everyone plays that class unfortunately two of the parts for the Silent Hill 2 playthrough were muted and most of the ones I played through besides that are the shitty American ones which I like but like they're not as good as the original three I think one is good I think two is good I think 3 is iffy, and I think 4 is also iffy. And I don't hate, I really hate Origins. But Shadow Memories, Homecoming, and Downpour I think are all okay. In particular, I think all four of the first games have really bad gameplay, to be honest. People usually pass right over that. People usually don't care. What the fuck was that normal? Do you guys see that? What did Ken just do? Look at him. What is that? Huh? He like hit Gem with his head. I feel like I've never seen that normal in my life and I have no idea what it was. Don't tell me that's like close strong or something. Downpour has something really silly in it. Weapons break all the time in that game so you're constantly looking for new shit but you can hold like two items at a time. Um, but guns never break from overuse, from, like, hitting enemies with them. So if you get a gun, they end up being, like, some of the best melee weapons in the game. Just because they never, ever break. And then you can also fire them. Uh, Origins, I really, I thought the, the, the gameplay had kind of the bad monot, like, like it, it kind of had the bad gameplay of 1 through 4. Where the combat's kind of very unfun. But the combat had an extra layer of unfun because um, the way the weapons worked. 
every weapon in all of Origins breaks in like three or four hits. And a lot of them break in one. They're like throwing weapons instead of like swinging weapons. So like on a single enemy, it's not uncommon to break like three weapons against them. And the inventory in that game is like infinite. You can literally just carry an infinite number of things around with you. So a really, really, really big part of gameplay in Silent Hill Origins is like just constantly picking shit up and then like cycling through items, putting shit on, and just throwing it at people. It was also generally just missing a lot of content. I think it's a decently long game. I don't remember how long. But like, the Butcher is just a real half of Pyramid Head, which we already didn't need back. Um... And there was only the three endings, so it's just good end, bad end, and UFO end. I feel like the combat being bad is, like, okay, because it kind of encourages you to run away from enemies. But it's still really bad, no one cares. Like, the story of mm, Silent Hill games is really good, almost always. But it's just frustrating that in order to experience that story, you've got to, like, endure. It's definitely better the first time while you're afraid. But in every Silent Hill game, you can literally just run past enemies, and it's, like, the safest way to engage them. Like, once you realize just how little a threat the enemies pose to you in every Silent Hill. Honestly, I'm more afraid of the enemies in Shattered Memories than any other Silent Hill game, and that's pathetic. Because, like, that game had the worst enemies of every Silent Hill. They're all just, there's only one enemy in that game. but at least they were, like, actually terrifying, and you were supposed to run away from them, and they were hard to run away from. There was no intended way to fight them. Whereas it feels like they were going for that, but just by making the game awful with every other Silent Hill. The ghosts were pretty scary. The ghosts were like that. You were intended to run away, and that made them very stressful. You couldn't really sit and fight them. I also appreciate that the ghosts were like characters. Homecoming is usually regarded as probably the number one worst game in the series, which I find kind of funny because I feel like Origins is worse free. But um, uh, the combat was pretty easy in that game. There were only a few enemies that were really kind of in any way threatening to the player. But it was kind of fun because it had the dodging and it had the, like, you know. I don't know, something about it. The swinging was just like the combos. So how 4 had a ridiculous amount of backtracking, plus you visit every location twice. It's like a very unpun game in general, but it's a shame because like the room is like the best idea in the whole series. I really enjoyed all the room sections. And finally breaking out of that room was fucking amazing. And finding the shit that all, all was in it. It's like combining Silent Hill 1 with like fucking an Escape the Room Flash game. That was cool. But all the stuff where you had to leave the room, 
leave stuff in the room and then get it back out. Like, the 10 inventory space was a nuisance. No puzzle on any Silent Hill game is very interesting, to be honest. I've never played through Silent Hill 3 on hard puzzle mode, so maybe they are. Yeah, I played Fatal Frame. It's good. I have two, but I don't remember it. I think I played it at least once. I don't have any more. I had it would be more accurate. <laughs> I saw the price of Fatal Frame 1 for PS2. It was like 70 bucks last time I looked. I don't know what it is now. And I was like, that's a lot. And then while I was searching for it on eBay, um, I happened to notice that Fatal Frame 1 on Xbox was like $10. And I was like, wow, $70 on PS2, but $10 on Xbox. And then I looked up the price of an Xbox, and they were like 30 So I bought an Xbox and the Xbox copy of the game. And I played through Fatal Frame 1 on Xbox. It was my only game. Some way or another, I ended up getting Halo 1 and 2. I don't remember how. I played Ninja Gaiden Sigma, which I think is the same game, but worse. He's a real Kami, by the way. What's this guy's name? Inu. Cool. Street Fighter Five combo there. Jump uppercut. Damn, this is how you play Kami. Kimmy didn't have cancelable left forward in this game. She got that in Street Fighter 4. That was a big deal for her. In fact, I think the low strong doesn't cancel either. The uppercut super. That little hair is way too big. Though strong is pretty good, it links into itself and it's got nice priority. Oh, that was a low strong cancel, I think. So it does cancel. Ugh, he wanted the chip. I think Kemi didn't have dive kick in this game either. Kimmy didn't really come into her own until Street Fighter 4, I'm pretty sure. That was like the game that really solidified all her tools. Every Street Fighter character has a different game where they kind of break out. It makes me wonder if there are any Street Fighters who haven't broken out yet. Sim's been, Sim figured out what he was doing ever since Street Fighter 2. Same with like Ryu and Sagat. But you look at someone like Ken. Their game plan is usually based around stuff they got in Street Fighter 3.
<laughs> yeah, DJ or T-Hawk. Good candidates for characters who haven't come into their own yet. DJ is actually pretty unique even in Street Fighter 2. I don't know why he's so unpopular. T-Hawk, I think, is missing something. I don't know what. It's not all there yet, though. This piece is like synergy. Spire is close, but it's not it yet, I don't think. The ground pound is an interesting one. Maybe it's an air dash. Cool. Some supers in this game are level 3 only. I'm pretty sure that Hooligan Combination one is. Raging Demon is, for example. There's no like way to do a level 1 Raging Demon. Then actually it's a taunt where you can do level 1, level 2, or level 3 supers. It's like a taunt super. Then he's got another one that's level 3 only. Oh fuck, let's just have t -Hawk lobbing Tomahawks. It's like, um... Dalsim's Fireball in Street Fighter V. It throws them upward and they land on you. Nice punish. Only three minutes after this video. You go line out after this, I think. Maybe. Faye was already quite elaborate in Street Fighter 2. But I feel like the addition of a command grab really solidified things a lot. He feels like he's got a big purpose. Everything's working together. He uses all four of his special moves. Ibuki probably got her fucking light in SF5, to be honest. I feel like there was a lot of redundancy in Street Fighter 3 and 4. In 5, it feels like everything's working together pretty well. Neat. I feel like if they just treated Nightwolf like a more important character in Mortal Kombat, that would help him a lot. I appreciate that in MK9, but I'd like it a step further. I like that they did that with Liu Kang, because I think that's something that he needed to. There are certain characters who should just be like heroes, you know? Maybe Kai could be one of them too. No, he he Sindel he didn't even get Sindeld. He like Sindeld himself. He's the only one who didn't get Sindeld. He's the one who killed Sindel, actually. Aethers probably have like one frame startup in this game to be honest. They do okay damage too. They're attackable. But the way that techs work in this game is that it's like Street Fighter 2 techs where you just take less damage. Oh, it's over. It was a good watch. And I'm going to go. 
I'll try and get um, Honda's video out sometime tomorrow or the next day.